and that will be Texas and Seattle. And, of course, it's Glenn Otto going today. Otto the garbage man against, he's back, against Chris Flexen, who maybe hasn't been uh, uh, is, uh, is, is bad as bad as Otto. Both, both pretty bad, I guess you might want to say. So in this game, you got Seattle minus 140 coming off the sweep to uh, the Astros. Uh, they are playing the Rangers today, even though you see the Astros logo. It is uh, the Rangers against the Mariners and uh, the Rangers plus 125. Total in this game is eight and a half, minus 120 towards the under. Scott, talk to us about Texas and Seattle tonight. Every time you mention out of the garbage, man, I keep thinking of banana slugs. With there you go, as you should. There you go. <laughs> anyway. Listen, I, I played, as I mentioned, against Seattle at all three games in their series with Houston in some fashion or another. In fact, in a, I, I do free videos almost every day of the week, and two of the three games I talked about it on the free videos that I post about being on Houston and against Seattle. So I was really happy, obviously, with this weekend's results. And, you know, we kind of talked about Tampa at a buck 20 in a pitchy matchup. It's like, boy, I like the value on that with Tampa. And that's where I was yesterday. I mean, just did one, two games with Houston over Seattle. I get Framber Valdez at, what was it, minus $1.15 or whatever right. it was yesterday. I, I got to take a shot with that, especially with that baseball team. But I think Seattle bounces back on Monday. They were simply outclassed by the Astros on the hill. And then again, who is it uh, the, over the course of this entire season? Uh, Texas lost a couple of the games to Oakland. And in that game yesterday, they went 11 to 8. They were up 11 to 1. They almost blew a 10 run lead uh, to the Oakland A's. So, as you mentioned, Otto the Garbage Man, Glenn Otto, uh, tonight after facing that murderer's row of Astros hurlers the last three days, means that Seattle will, I think, be able to do damage at the plate. Otto does, doesn't fall, obviously, into the same level of competition, even with Orkady, obviously with Valdez. Verlander, by the way, nice up-and-coming young pitcher. He had to keep his nose clean. He might do something in this league. Uh, but we saw Verlander have another great outing uh, over the weekend. So Seattle, I think, will find plenty of success at the plate. Otto has a couple of things that I look for to play against starting pitchers or to play overs, which is a 40-plus hard hit percentage, a double-digit barrel rate. And I'm not here to say that Chris Flexen's been a whole lot better when it comes to those two metrics. He's no ace, but he's got better control than Otto. He doesn't jam himself up like Otto tends to do sometimes with free passes. And he's backed by a better team. You take Houston out of the mix, and Seattle's on a 22-3 and run their last 25 games against teams not nicknamed the Astros. They've won 20 of their last 27 against right-handers. They've dominated Texas when these teams meet in the Emerald City. So, uh, listen, they just swept a four-game series in Arlington, and I think they get back in the win column today with the victory over Texas. And, in fact, I, I did make this a best bet for today. All right. Base winner. Yeah, I think it's priced right where it needs to be at minus 140. I do think Seattle has a significant edge in the bullpen. It's really hard for me to distinguish these two pitchers. I think they're both pretty pretty bad. I've got uh, auto uh, 129 base winner numbers to 29% worse than average. But Flexen has not been flexing his muscles, according to my base winner numbers. He's 24% worse than average. If you look at both guys' base winner ERA at basewinner.com, Flexen's at 5.26, Otto's at 5.53. So I don't really see that big of a difference in the starting pitchers. I have Seattle uh, offense rated better than Texas, but they're close. And one thing that's interesting is Otto's stuff plus is 42 percentile, which isn't great. If you look at flex in the step plus, it's in the 15th percentile, which is terrible. And uh, but I think that the bullpen. So th this is kind of if I had to if I had to play it, this is how I would play it. I'd play Texas in the first half, Seattle in the second half. So uh, you can get it at six to one. Texas, that's a, a double result play. Texas first five, Seattle wins the game, and uh, pays pays six to one. I think that that's that that could happen in this spot. Okay, well, I am. I cannot pass up a chance of going against Otto the Garbage Man. He <laughs> has not won in his last five starts. Uh, I know I've seemed like a broken record because I go against this guy quite a bit, and deservedly so. Uh, this guy is averaging one run per inning in these five starts that I'm talking about. Uh, Flexen is no bargain, granted, but I will say this. This is the same matchup that we saw with these two teams before the All-Star break, uh, the same matchup eight days ago, where Flexen started on three days rest. 
And so I'll give him a little bit of a pass on that game. He was pulled early, but it really wasn't for his performance. He wasn't that bad. And so then, you know, when you look at Seattle, like we talked about, uh, they were on that that big run, playing with confidence, and then all of a sudden the air got shot down by the Astros this past weekend. I'm with Scott. I think that they will bounce back against a friendlier pitcher and a friendlier opponent. Uh, and again, the A's took two out of three against the Rangers. The Rangers exploded yesterday. They were up 10 to nothing, and then all of a sudden this game is an 11 to 8 final. And again, you know, the, the, the bullpen doesn't impress me at all with Texas. None of the pitching uh, impresses me. I am concerned a little bit about Julio Rodriguez. Rodriguez, since the home run derby, came back. He was a scratch uh, about an hour before that start on Friday. Did not play at all over the weekend. Looks like he may not play again tonight. So check your lineup when you're looking for this because he is a big piece for the Seattle Mariners. Obviously, contributes to a lot of their success. But it is a is a bone bruise, is what they're saying on it on his hand. So it's not broken or anything of that nature. You know, we'll see if Scott Service puts him, uh, you know, uh, out there tonight, or he's going to rest him another for a day or two. But anyway, I, I agree with Scott. I think the a, the uh, M's get back on track here, and uh, they are very glad to see the Houston Astros leave town. You get a friendlier opponent coming here with the the Rangers. So I'm banking Scott that flexing. Or as Mark says, flexes his muscles a little bit, and he is just better than average tonight. That's all we're asking. Just be better than average. Get to that bullpen. Let the bats come alive. They're still at home, and uh, and knock off the Rangers. So that guy's that's frustrating. True. I mean, TC. Flexen's not. You know, we all talked about it. You know, we're we're sitting here ripping the crap out of out of Otto, and yeah. we also all said that you know Flexen's not a whole lot better. Yeah. Uh, if you want to bring it, but he's on his home bump with a better baseball team better bullpen as far as I'm concerned. And, and again, I, I like a team that fights hard in a loss. And if you saw that again, yesterday, Seattle started clawing their way back in it. There was no, I'm giving up. They're still obviously in the wild card race. And uh, I would just rather go against a team that almost completely collapsed on Sunday after losing two straight to Oakland to start that series. So there you have it. There you go. Scott and I will be on the Seattle Mariners tonight. Uh, Decent price as well, too. So we'll take the Mariners at minus 140. 